Okay, ESTPs. ESTPs live in the fast lane, and sometimes others can't keep up. They're about the thrill of the moment. Their spontaneous nature and desire for constant action can often lead them to new experiences, and, consequently, new people too. For an ESTP, ghosting isn't personal. They've just spotted a shinier, faster car on the highway of life. Highway. Ew. Pandering to Americans. We used to literally own America. Anyway, I'm going to put ESTPs in highly likely. ISTPs. ISTPs might not ghost you intentionally. They just took a solo hike and never came back. They're independent, often quite reserved, and deeply value their solitude. While they are definitely highly practical and intellectual problem solvers, the complexity of emotions can sometimes be a problem too daunting, or in their view, too stupid to fix. If an ISTP ghosts you, they will want you to appreciate the beauty of their silent goodbye. I'm going to put ISTPs in likely. INFJs. I think an INFJ would write you a heartfelt letter before they ghosted you, but then it wouldn't be ghosting really. INFJs, being deeply empathetic and intuitive, are likely to understand the emotional impact ghosting can have on someone. On balance, I think they would rather navigate a difficult conversation than leave things unsaid. However, I will add the infamous door slam caveat. That takes them from unlikely to sometimes in my view. I think INFJs are more likely to be a ghost than ghost you. Okay, ENFJs. ENFJs would ghost you only if they thought it was for the greater good and had spent sleepless nights deciding it. ENFJs are warm and caring people who often put the needs of others before their own, often to a fault. However, their strong desire for harmony might sometimes make them choose ghosting over confrontation. I would say that is uncommon though. Any type can be immature, but ENFJs are more likely to be emotionally mature faster. Because of that, I'm going to put them in unlikely. ENFJs are the type to hold a support group for people they've ghosted. Okay, ENTPs? ENTPs are a type who will ghost you right after debating the ethics of ghosting with you. ENTPs are known for many things, chief among them being this constant desire for exploration of new ideas. Their thirst for novelty makes new topics stand out like oases in the desert. This may often lead them to drop conversations and people who aren't intellectually stimulating, or rather, conversations and people who are no longer that way, since they're considered to be land that has already been mined. For an ENTP, ghosting is just an unscheduled debate recess that lasts forever. I'm going to put them in highly likely. INTPs. An INTP didn't ghost you. They just fell into a deep and dark internet rabbit hole and are now in jail or in grossed in the topic. INTPs relish autonomy and pursuing their own unique interests in their own time and on their own terms. I think because many of them can't feed themselves, they don't come across as being as independent as they really are. I'm going to put INTPs in likely. It would have been highly likely, but I can counter that with the question of why would they be talking to you in the first place? Okay, ISFJs. An ISFJ ghosting you is about as likely as them forgetting a family member's birthday. ISFJs are warm, responsible, and deeply committed to their relationships. They do believe in harmony, but I think they would rather face a tough situation head-on, instead of leaving it unresolved. The only thing an ISFJ might ghost is a surprise party that they've organised for you. I'm going to put them in, unlikely. Okay, ESFJs. ESFJs are more ghosties than ghosters. ESFJs are social butterflies. However, their high regard for healthy, harmonious relationships might lead them to choose ghosting if they see that as a kind of lesser evil than being disagreeable and confrontational. Despite that, I would say it's very unlikely nonetheless. ESFJs are social initiators who can manage massive networks without much effort. If an ESFJ ghosts you, check the obituaries because they might be dead. Okay, ESFPs. ESFPs don't ghost you. You're just out of sight and therefore out of mind. ESFPs are kinetic, vivacious, sociable, and drawn to the excitement of the here and now. They are usually energised by the tangible, physical world more so, and can sometimes forget about their digital and distant contacts. I think they're in the highly likely category, but if they bumped into you in person, all of that enthusiasm would still be there. If an ESFP ghosts you, don't worry too much. You're not the first to end up in the been there done that pile. Okay, ENTJs. For an ENTJ, ghosting is just efficient time management. ENTJs are driven individuals who value their time immensely. If they deem a relationship or conversation unproductive, they won't hesitate to cut it off abruptly. However, when you're in their inner circle, they are not going to be as ruthlessly pragmatic. But for everyone else, if the utility dissipates, then the relationship might too. I'm going to put them in likely. An ENTJ doesn't ghost. They merely delegate you to manager of the irrelevance department. 
Okay, ENFPs. ENFPs are ghosters, but they're kind of friendly ghosts, like the Caspers of the MBTI world. ENFPs are warm, enthusiastic, energetic, and also very empathetic too. But they have a strong sense of wanderlust, and a grass is greener ness. Although they do value relationships, they might get sidetracked by, well, anything. I'm going to put them in highly likely. In their defense, if they are ghosting you, it's probably to do something worthwhile. If an ENFP ghosts you, it's because they're busy rallying for the rights of... ghosts. Or something. Okay, ESTJs. I think ESTJs are more likely to aggressively haunt you than ghost you. ESTJs are organized, pragmatic, and value efficiency. They are disciplined people who don't like to be frivolous with their energy. If they need to cut someone out, they will do so very easily. But the flip side of these traits is that it doesn't take them long to fill their life with people that they know they actually want around. I'm going to put them in sometimes. An ESTJ doesn't ghost. They simply execute an early termination clause. Okay, ISTJs. ISTJs won't ghost you. They'll simply archive you in the done section of their life. ISTJs are dependable and methodical. They dislike disorder and unpredictability. Although they are committed, if they see that the end of a relationship is inevitable, they might opt for an abrupt, clean cut. Generally though, ISTJs will screen people thoroughly. If you are in their life to begin with, they have a good reason for it. Therefore, cutting people out is often not necessary. I'm going to put them in unlikely. If an ISTJ ghosts you, it's after a risk assessment concluded your reliability. Okay, INTJs. It's pretty common for INTJs to engage in a periodic social cull, where many are phased out of their cerebral ecosystems. INTJs are independent people, often with very high personal standards. They value depth and efficiency. That will lead them to pull away from interactions they consider unfruitful or superficial, which is nearly every interaction they have with the average person. I'm going to put INTJs in likely. INTJs don't ghost. They just relocate you to the dusty attic of their mind palace. Okay, INFPs. Sometimes INFPs float off into the ether, and, well, there isn't exactly a visitor's pass to follow them with. INFPs are deeply introspective, and often get absorbed in their rich inner worlds. They value authentic relationships, and they might retreat inward if they sense conflict or inauthenticity. Even if they have a good relationship with a person, I think they are still liable to periodically disappear off the grid. I'm going to put INFPs in likely. It's not that an INFP ghosted you, they just forgot to send a postcard from Dreamland. Okay, ISFPs. With ISFPs, there is always a risk that you'll find yourself relegated from the supporting cast to audience role of their own personal indie movie. ISFPs are adventurous and freedom-loving. Although they are highly sensitive to their own feelings and values, they are also very receptive to those things in others as well. Despite that, they can easily get swept up in their passions and forget to keep in touch. I'm going to put them in likely. Getting ghosted by an ISFP is like watching a bird fly off, captivating, a touch of melancholy, but entirely in their nature. If you would like to be personally ghosted by many people, then join the Love Who Discord server. The link for that is down below. Also, don't ghost me. Subscribe.